York City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. It's time for Hot Come on. I like it, I like it, I like it. <laughs> Good morning, inmates. Morning. And Felicity Huffman. Oh. 14 days. So she starts today. It's a Federal Correction Institute in Dublin, California. Apparently this place is the same place that Heidi Fleiss stayed when she did her crime. Oh. It's a minimum security, cushy female pr uh, prison. Now, I don't know anything about cushy and, and prison. They don't even belong in the same sentence. <laughs> But I guess in the crime world, there are levels to the game. I don't know. So she's in the room with three other women, and they have <laughs> an open toilet. Oh. Which means that if you have to take a number two, or change a tampon, oh. there is no stall, there are no walls, <laughs> there, nothing. Like you are just like, you know what? It's only 14 days. I'd be sitting there just like this on the toilet. <laughs> yep. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> Look, I'll tell you, when I'm in the bathroom, you know, and they have all those stalls, I'm the woman, I don't like to close the stall. Like, I don't like to be closed in like that. I also don't like to hear voices while I take care of my business. So this would totally aggravate me. I'd probably be constipated the whole 14 days. <laughs> Um, well, if that's not enough, well then, at least they have a gym, a library, and a TV room. Oh. You know? Uh, she was also being issued a toothbrush, toothpaste, a comb. Now here's the thing with a comb. Depending on the texture of your hair and what you like to do with your hair, not any comb is a comb. <laughs> like, I like a wide tooth comb, you know, to rake through. And then when I get up to the baby hair area, I like a small tooth comb, because that does the business. <laughs> And I like a comb with a rat tail at the end. You know the comb and then it has that tail for hardness because you can scratch your head at the same time you can lift and separate. Uh, they're also kind enough to give her soap. And she's also allowed to, and this, this is weird to me, she's allowed to uh, have one piece of jewelry under $100. I'm like, first of all, that's a lot of money. Like you can go to Claire's, girls, you know, you can get beautiful jewelry for like $5, $8 and whatnot, number one. Number two, who wants to wear jewelry and look pretty in prison? <laughs> Set you up for the takedown. No, 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 you want to ugly down in prison. And that's why, that's why like you take horrific dumps. You don't, like, <laughs> turn, turn everybody off. <laughs> Oh, by the way, we checked the menu for last night's dinner. Salisbury, oh, excuse me, peppered steak. Now, I don't know about you, I like peppered steak with a nice bed of steamed rice underneath. That's what they have there. Now, they call them green beans, so it must be somebody not of color talking about this, because we call them uh, string beans. Right, right. Don't we call them string green beans? beans. String green beans. beans. Right. right. <laughs> Cultural difference. Um, and they have Whole wheat bread. Wow. Whole wheat, can you imagine? They don't have just a plain, you know, slice of white or something like that. Anyway, today she'll have bran flakes for breakfast. Well, that's not so bad if they have a little raisin someplace and you throw the raisins on. 
maybe a little packet of equal on top just to flavor it up. She's gonna have breaded fish sandwich for lunch. Yum. No, no, that gets dicey. They didn't say fried, they said breaded. And there's a big difference. Now that right there sounds nasty. But she can do something with that. Just pull the breading off, put a little mustard on top, a little mayo at the bottom, and maybe if they have hot sauce there, you can work with that. And then for dinner, why is my mouth warm and so <laughs> I can't, I can't. I'm trying, look. <laughs> look. Oh. Oh. I'm trying to make the most of my 14 days. Okay, so for dinner tonight, we're having Salisbury steak. Now look, I don't know about you, there are three different things that people call Salisbury steaks. Some people call them Swiss steaks. Some people call them cube steaks. And then other people call them Salisbury steaks. I like a cube steak. Oh my gosh. <laughs> are you right? Like I could work with that. I could, like I'm surprised the food is so good. Whatever happened to just bread and water? You know what I mean? And I do like the idea of the open toilet. When she gets out, I, I, I'm sure she's gonna do a sit down interview and I, I'm positive this woman will work again. You know, you know, I like, she'll work again. Um, and she's gonna do some sit down interview someplace, maybe with the Robin Roberts or something like that. And you know, um, but it'll be Lori Laughlin who will take the L for everyone. And she's going way up the river. Yup. <laughs> Just saying. So when she gets released, this Felicity, when she gets released after 14 days, um, first of all, I'm sure she'll be thinner. Depending on if, like I like the food, I'd probably get fatter. You know, what I, I, you know, didn't sound so bad to me. You have the right sauces and you conjure up sauces and you make your own. <laughs> I'm just saying, sauce is everything to me. A meal without sauce is not a meal. So when she gets released, she's gonna be on probation for a year. Wah, wah, wah. You know, a year of probation. So what does that mean? She can't, what does that mean? You can't commit another crime? Well, I'm sure that won't be difficult. She can't smoke weed? But, but, we, but weed is legal in California. She could, you know, she could say she has the uh, glaucoma or something and get one of her fancy doctors, because remember, she and William um, Macy, her husband, they still have money, you know, pay off a fancy doctor, get her the prescription for the weed. She could be chiefing all day long for a year, and that, that won't be violating probation. Okay, and then she'll have to serve 250 hours of community service. That's not bad at all, you know what I mean? And, and you know, being fancy in, in LA and stuff, her community service is probably gonna be something like, you know, volunteering for a youth group. It's not gonna be out there on the 405 with a, with a picker picking up garbage, but that's what they need to have her do. Just saying. And the fine, her fine is payable. These are wealthy people, $30,000 for a fine. Uh, I, you were so distracting. You came for it, didn't you, with the gold pants in the front row? Yes. You came for the party. And your friend too. You all are here for it. I'm gonna give it to you good, I'll try my best. You know, Michael Rappaport will be out here better. Um, later. Oh, he's a good one, he's a good one. Um, okay, so here's the thing. The N word, oh God, and away we go. I was watching the debates, by the way, last night. Clap if you watched. Mm. Not enough people watched, Suzanne. No. Did you watch? No. <laughs> you didn't? I didn't watch. I was reading. Reading what? I, I'm obsessed with reading lately. I don't know what happened. What are you reading, Suzanne? I just finished reading um, the, how, that's the book about the crawdads singing. What's it called? Where the crawdads sing. Oh, it's unbelievable. I finished it last night. No, unbelievable. It's a New York Times bestseller list. No, no, it's popular. Hmm? So you don't care about the state of our country? No. <laughs> I watched with my niece. We were riveted. I needed to the book. It was so good. I sh I, 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 maybe we DVR'd it. I'll, I'll fill you in, because that's time you will never get back in your life. I <laughs> Anyway, so uh, Jane the Virgin star, Gina Rodriguez, right? So people are upset with her for saying the N-word. 
Well, she might think she could get away with it because she's Hispanic, she's from Chicago. And you know, it just, oh, with this. <clears throat> All right, Gina posted a video of herself. She was getting her makeup done and she's singing the Fugees, Ready or Not. Now she was 12 years old when the song came out. So she grew up with Fuji music. She loves Lauryn Hill. And the lyrics were, I can do what you do. Easy, believe me. Fronting on the N words, give me heebie jeebies. But she didn't say N word, she said the N word. And she, and she said it with a head rock, oh. right? And, and, and all, you know, she immediately took the post down and apologized. Take a look. I just wanted to reach out and apologize. I am sorry. I am sorry if I offended anyone by singing along to the Fugees, to a song I love that I grew up on. I love Lauryn Hill. And um, I really am sorry if I offended you. Now I'm gonna start with, she's a really great actress. She's a very attractive girl. She's very talented. But I have to end with, what planet are you from? Don't you realize what is going on out here? You can't get away with anything anymore. Like, I love my gays, but I would never use the F word, Norman. Mm. No. Illegal, You're illegal, uh, get you a quick punch in the face. Right. <laughs> they will throw you down the manhole. Right. You will lay there for two weeks and be eaten by rats. By Shout right. out to New York. You know the story I'm talking about, that homeless man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not funny at all, but it's just. You don't, there's certain things you don't do. Like just cause you're cool with people doesn't mean that you have the past to say, I don't remember the last time I called an Italian person at the W word. You know what word I'm talking about. It rhymes with bop. You don't do that. And I like Italian people. And then men are particularly hot. But. <laughs> just saying. It's like, who are you calling a bitch? Now that's a word right there. <laughs> Girls, men, we use that word a lot and a lot of times it's in, in joking and just and things like that, but it depends on who it's coming from and the context in which it's used. So you're just better off not saying it or you'll be down in the manhole eating by rats for two weeks too. <laughs> it was a, you know? And here in New York, our Governor Cuomo, he used the N word in addressing something, and um, he's no longer with Sandra Lee, which means he's really, really single. Just saying, just saying. Anyway, New York, I'm single too. Just saying. I only met him one time at a cocktail party. He was so kind, and really tall, and really um, present in the conversation. I forget what we talked about. All I was saying was like, wow. <laughs> I'm talking to him like, Sandra Lee's really lucky. I bet you he takes her down. <laughs> yeah, like I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> anyway, but look. So the governor Cuomo, Andrew, he used the N word yesterday and people are making a big deal about it, but he did a disclaimer first. Uh, let's listen. Times also said in an article the other day, and they were talking about it, going back to the Italian Americans, cause you now have me. I, I read uh, the article, right? yep. The, they used an expression that Southern Italians were called, I believe they're saying Southern Italian Sicilians, I'm half Sicilian were called, quote unquote, and pardon my language, but I'm just quoting the times. N word. Well, how many times did he use it that we had to bleep it so much? <laughs> I mean, people might give him a pass because he prefaced before saying it. But even that, you didn't have to preface, just say N-word. You don't, I like, and, and that word, and during our Hot Topics morning meeting uh, today, um, it was brought up, well, do you think that it should st still be used in music? And I said, look, we got more things to think about, you all. How about, I mean. I mean, people are walking down the street getting stabbed and killed for no reason. You know, black hate crimes are at an all-time high. 
Jewish hate crimes are at an all time high. If you saw the debate last night, then you're as confused as me. <laughs> like it's every man for himself out here. And there's certain things that going back to you, Gina, you just didn't have to do it. Just, just don't do it. Just. <laughs> oh. So, so Justin Bieber is trying to sell his house on Instagram. Well, I think that's very smart. You cut out that realtor fee. Keep all the money for yourself. Hmm. Anyway, he has 119 million Instagram followers. Probably not one of them could afford this house. He paid $8.5 million for his home, but he's selling it, including the furniture. Like, I think that looks very peaceful. With the exception of these two $35,000 cats. Oh yes, he bought two of those specialized cats. They're a mix between like a wild, oh, they're beautiful though. Remember when I was telling you I was going to buy one of these cats? I, I ended up going to foster care and adopting uh, Midway and Chit Chat. But, but, oh. They're in the pet spa right now until I come back from getting my star on the Walk of Fame. I took them yesterday. It was, anyway. Um, hi, girls. They're going to get their nails done and they're together, and they have a, like a two bedroom apartment there. It's, it's not even a cage, it was really nice. And then there's a pathway through where they can see each other and play with each other. They were really nervous to be left alone because I've only had them for a month and I picture them saying, I think that she doesn't like us anymore. She's taken us away. I cried, I cried when I dropped them off, but a really good place. Anyway, but back to the situation in hand. I really was sneaking, you guys. I did price cats that looked like this. This is before I found out Justin Bieber had the cat, like I'm looking online. Between seven and $20,000, I was told. I was like, get out of here with that. I'm gonna get me two bum cats. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And take really good care of them. Anyway, $35,000, but they're beautiful though, right? It's okay if you think it, but just don't participate in that. There are so many homeless animals out here, dogs, cats, squirrels, and stuff. I, you know, I just, and, and PETA, PETA is going after him like crazy. Anyway, back to the house. The house was built in 1932. Well preserved, correct? Five bedrooms, seven bathrooms, a library, a home theater, a beautiful kitchen. And I like the way he decorates. Now, did, did we say he's selling it with the furniture? Yeah, furniture and, comes and the with art? it, yeah. I like the, I like the way it looks. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's like sophisticated with a young man's touch. Like I like the artwork and stuff. Um, his idea is working about selling it on Instagram because maybe his believers can't afford it, but their daddies can. <laughs> People of wealth are interested in buying this house, including a few billionaires with a B. So, this is what I think. I think that this is a great idea. He's selling the house for even more than he paid for it. So he's going to make money. He's cut out the middleman realtor, good. And, and you would think a billionaire would not wanna buy Justin Bieber's house. You know, we were talking about that in the morning, being like, who'd wanna buy Justin Bieber's house? I wouldn't, because I'd be thinking, did he urinate in that corner too? <laughs> you know, how much funky spunk is on this couch? And, and you know, burning sage won't be enough to get all that out, you know what I mean? But if you are a billionaire, chances are you're working 24 hours a day, you barely know your children, but your children are believers, you see? So then you say, um, Cicely, happy birthday. I got you Justin Bieber's house. And then the whole family moves in and then all of a sudden the dad is, you know, like the hero, now he's back on the road making billions and not even knowing who his kids are, but, but you, you know what I mean. Anyway, I think it's smart on Justin's part, good for him. Um, so remember the rapper Yo-Yo? Try to help me out, you try to me out. Clap if you remember Yo-Yo, okay. And of course, we all know Debrat. I love her. Hi, Brat. Um, anyway, they're speaking out about the challenges facing female rappers. In my opinion, this is not just facing female rappers, it's facing, facing women versus men all the time, regardless of what you do for a living. Um, they say that the rise of women in hip hop came with double standards. 
They're speaking out about their own struggles in the industry on Sunday night's E! True Hollywood Story. I know, I'm there. I didn't know that they even still made that E! True Hollywood Story. I am there for this, but take a look. Hip hop female artists continuously reinvent themselves. You have to constantly stay hot or they move on to someone else. You're expected to look a certain way. They want you to be beautiful, can't get fat, but men could be fat as hell. Like, look at Biggie and look at Heavy D. Really, the main thing, you always want to be fuckable. But that's not just for female rappers, that's for women in general. I mean, men are always about to, are allowed to be fat slobs and we still accept it. And when women get to be fat slobs, you have to have a masculine swing, if you know what I mean, because otherwise they don't look at you as a bull. I, or maybe I said that wrong, but the point being, as a woman, we're always struggling with our weight. It's not fair. And men, like, you know, Kevin James can be on the King of Queens and grab a hottie like Leah Remini as his wife. You know what I mean? Homer Simpson, Simpson got Marge. <laughs> anyway, I understand her point, but I don't believe that that's just in entertainment. I think that that's every day. Clap if you agree with me. Okay, good. So the E! True Hollywood Story airs Sunday night at 10 p.m. on E! And we've got more great show for you, everybody. Later on in the show, Mike Rapp is here. But up next, it's Celebrity Fan Out. So grab a snack and come on back. Welcome back. It's time for Celebrity Fan Out. All right, I love this. Our first celebrity fan out comes from Michelle B who watches the Wendy Show on KTTV in Newport Beach, California. Michelle writes, hey Wendy, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I was on a remote beach when I ran into Justin and Haley Bieber. Wow. Wow. She says, I actually noticed her first because of her model swagger. We walked back to our cars together and I tried to talk Haley into camping sometime. They were a very kind and genuine couple. Nice. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Our next celebrity fan out comes from Sarah F who watches the Wendy Show here in NYC on WNYW. Sarah writes, hey Wendy, how you doing? Hi. I was walking to pick up my daughter from school when I ran into Ja Rule. She says, I knew it was him when I heard his distinct voice. I asked him if he was going to do another song with J-Lo and he laughed. <laughs> I love his voice. Mrs. Rule is a very lucky woman. Um, uh, the next celebrity fan out comes from Monica L, who watches the Wendy Show on KDFW in Ules, Cali uh, Ules, Texas. And Monica writes, hey Wendy, how you doing? How you doing? Um, two, weeks, uh, two weeks into my new job at the airport, I got to meet Chris Hemsworth. Mm. Mm. She says, He's really tall and sexy. Needless to say, I love my job. That's a good one. Thank you, Monica. And our final celebrity fan out comes from Sandra S, who watches the Wendy Show on KTTV in Santa Clarita, California. And Sandra writes, hey, Wendy, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I was at a theater when, with, with, when my daughter met Gabri uh, sorry, uh, Garcelle Bouvier. Yeah. Ooh, fancy. She was so sweet to my daughter and told her that she was very pretty. Garcelle has flawless skin. Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. If you've ever had a celebrity encounter, sharing is always funny. Go to wendyshow.com for all the details. Michael Rappaport is next. Yeah. Don't go far. <laughs> Uh, 
actor and a comedian who stars in that drama that we all love. It's called Atypical on Netflix. Well, currently he's on tour doing stand-up. Please welcome back to our show, Michael Rappaport. <laughs> So good to see you. You look great. Thank you. Uh, shoe cam, please. You see the golden goose. Oh, okay. You see the golden goose. Okay. Model yeah. twirl. You see, boom, boom. Okay. Boom. Golden goose. Wendy, are you up on golden goose? Yes, I am. Okay, because this is Italian. It's handmade. It uh, seems like up your eye. My wife loves them. They make some uh, men's ones. I got them. I feel good. I look fly. What's good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good, Wendy. Well, because the last couple times you came here. Disappointing. You kind of, the shoe cam, was, I didn't say anything, Rap. Disappointing. Rapped, but uh, just, but you've upped your game. I upped my game. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm not, I'm not like a big spender, but, but these, these cost a little money and I brought, these are fresh out the box. I bought them to rock on your show. So I Thank wasn't you. playing. Thank you, Michael. I wasn't playing, Wendy. You gotta get in the house quick before the monsoon comes yes. later. You do not wanna get them I know, I know, I got a box for them in, the, in, in there. So you mentioned your wife, Rap is married. Um, he's been uh, married for how long? Uh, we've been married three years. There you go. Yes. Now, I don't think that I ever noticed that you have a name ring for your wedding ring. That's kind of a cute idea. It, it is cute, this is like, we, I have my regular it's wedding ring, um, and then, you know, we got these, I like this one's What's old name, school. What's your name, Kibi? Kibi, yeah, so this one's cool. It's so it's, cool. It's a little something, but it, I like it, it's, it gives a little flavor to it. Yes. Sometimes the wedding ring's kind of boring for men. It's a, but that's a good idea, Yeah, though. it's nice, I'm, I'm happy with it. Oh, yeah, and your girls? Uh, boys, good. They're boys? good. 17 and 19. Oh, that's a good they're, age. They're, they shave and all that. Oh. And do they still live with you? Yeah, oh, well, one of them's a college student, and, and he's, he lives in Brooklyn, and he's, you know, he's, he shaves, and he does, you know, 19-year-old stuff. Uh -huh. I remember when I was 19, the last thing I wanted to do was live with my father. Yeah. So uh, they're, they're good boys. They're good boys. They're, 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 they're doing well. Hey, here's the thing. I didn't know that you did stand up. Yes. Well, I started out, uh, like my first professional thing was as a stand up. And this was when I, I was, had no idea. Yeah, when I was 19 and I did it till I was about, till I did from like 89 to like 93. And then of course the big retirement of 1993, which people are still getting over. <laughs> um, and then I fell in love with acting, started acting. And then about a year ago, I decided to uh, get back into stand up. I love doing it. I've been touring the country and I'm excited to. Um, Do you use the N word? On stage? Yes. All the time. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, no, I don't use the M word. What are you, crazy? Of course not. But, because some people would think that maybe, like there are certain people that are not black. Yeah. Who take it that they have a pass because they are down with everyone. Like you're one of those people, you knock down all racial barriers. Yeah. But the, why don't you use it, Rap? Because, you know, I don't like, uh, I would, I'm Jewish, I wouldn't like anybody using the K word. Yup. You know, and- That's what I'm saying. You know, and-, and That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and-, and Yes. And in my, in my opinion, if, you know, I grew up in New York City. If you were to use these words, you know, uh, up until that word was started, you'd be ready to throw down. Yes. Um, so so I, I respect the, the, the respect that, and there's other words to use, and, and uh, uh -huh. you know, almost like the, uh, I don't know, it's just not my thing. Say. Okay, um, have you ever been in jail? <laughs> I love you. I, uh, I did. I did a one-day bid once in in uh, Norfolk, uh, Virginia. What'd you do? Trespassing. They were mad because I was with some black dudes in a mall during the middle of the uh -huh, day. Uh huh. So I, I did like I did about like 17 hours, a 17-hour bid. And, uh, and, uh, I did, it, it takes a toll on you, though. Even I, did a, I did a three-hour bid. It took a toll on me. Yeah, it's it's I'll no talk joke. about it in the movie. Jail's not cool. No. For, for 17 hours, three days, 14 days, on lockdown for Felicity Huffman. The question I have is, well, they're a married couple. They've yeah. been married for a long time. Uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not trying to get William H. Uh, locked down. A but, man should take the fall? What are you saying? I mean, how is, this is his, his wife. They have their kids. Isn't he has nothing to do with it. I'm not trying to get you locked down, William H., but what's going on here? 
Do you think he should have done the time instead of her? You know what I think? Because I think that, what, what is the point in being with a man if he's not gonna do the bid for you? The 14 day bid? Yeah! I, but I think that this case was, was looked at so seriously uh, uh, that they knew she was the, the one from the family doing it yeah. and they couldn't have, otherwise they would've like, I'm sure they would've been like, we're gonna get them both, but he probably really, some parents they focus on certain things in the household and this was probably her thing. Yeah. It's crazy, 14 days, she'll be all right. She'll come out, she'll be ripped. She'll be in there doing <laughs> yoga. She'll be fine. She is just nothing. She's lucky it's not 14 years. So I saw you at, on Watch What Happens Live when you were on there with Kenya. Yes. And did you know, do you, are you a watcher of the Housewives to begin with? Did you know who Kenya was? Do you follow that? Do, 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 does a bear go doo-doo in the woods? Okay now. <laughs> okay, so you're our guy. Oh yeah. Okay, so you knew exactly who you were sitting with but she flipped on you. Yeah, she, 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 she tried me, and that's fine. <laughs> and I, got, I, got, I, I started talking about the fact that her ankles were ashy when she tried me. And that was, I had to do it because she, she got into a whole realm and I was like, yo, you're on TV, like bust your ankles though. Your ankles are like, they're gravelly. Like, you know, like they're, they're sandy right now. Michael, I can't deal with you. I love you so much. <laughs> but, but she, I think she got upset because I look at her and the characters on all the shows as characters. I know their reality, <laughs> and she's a great antagonizer. She's uh, she's uh, she's the bad guy, and and uh, you know it wasn't a big deal, but you know because it was on Watch What Happens Live, and I'm a guy, she's a woman. She she got racial and all that stuff, so I had to ha say yep. yo, but but your ankles are still ashy. Yes. So I know. <laughs> but but I'm I'm happy she's coming back. She's got the baby. She's got the baby. She's got the, she's got the divorce paper. She got a lot of things going on. And for me, uh, as a housewife fan, and I really am a true blue housewife fan, uh, 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 their pain is our pleasure. Uh, so it makes for great TV. <laughs> That's true. We, we like uh, the craziness and the chaos. And, and, and Kenya, to me, is a, <coughs> she's a world-class Hall of Fame housewife. <laughs> as much as I might not like her character, she's great for the show. Do you want Marlo to have a peach? Because I do. Yes, Marlo deserves a peach. <laughs> she deserves a peach. She, She's been putting it in for a few years. She's been consistent, she's grown, she's softened, she's opened up, she's gotten more personal. Her wig game is insane. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the trip last year, the wigs were just, she should have a peach just on her wig game. Will you miss Bethany on New York Housewives? Wendy, I am still reeling uh, over the announcement of her Bethany Frankel's uh, retirement. It's oh. devastating, it's almost like a death in the family. Um, one of the great, uh, I, I consider her the Michael Jordan of all housewives. Okay. Uh, uh, and I think obviously her, her jersey will be raised in the Housewives Hall of Fame, Hall with, of fame. The, with her Manola Blahniks. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I'm devastated by it. I really will am. Will you miss Lisa Vanderpump in Beverly Hills? I will miss her. I will miss uh, Lisa Vanderpump. Um, she, you know, that storyline last year got a little nuts, but if, if you don't miss Lisa, you're gonna miss Ken and his shirts. Like her husband Ken with the purple and pink shirts. And the fabulous. dogs. And the hair. I mean, so yeah, I, you miss them all when they're gone. Is this family watching you and your wife? Like, I, I, I'm digging this conversation right here. <laughs> I, like, your wife is such a fortunate woman. I, you I'm, know, you're masculine, you're a man. Yes. But you've got tendencies that we all like. Like, you watch The Housewives, which a lot of men think, oh, that's for women. I love it. But is, is my wife, uh, uh, I am way more lucky than she is, trust me. I, I, she puts up with this. She puts up with all of it. <laughs> and, and some of it we don't see. The smells, the sounds, the burping, the coughing, the farting, she puts up with it all. She's, she's, a, she's very patient and she's, she's the right woman for me. I love her. You love basketball. Love it. Love it. What did you think about Lamar on Dancing with the Stars? You know, Lamar Odom was such a, a, a crafty, uh, a basketball player, left-handed, you know, could dribble for a tall guy. The fact that he looked like uh, uh, his back hurt, his feet hurt, and I'm not gonna say that I'm a great dancer, but I was just surprised. Lamar, you know, you know he could move, the, you know, when you he's dribbling. He'd be able to dance He better? looked crazy up there, but I'm, I'm, I love Lamar. I'm glad that he's healthy. I'm glad that he's moving forward in his life, and he's a good dude with a, with a, with a good heart, so I'm, I'm happy yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. But, but, especially for a guy from Queens, uh -huh. this is a Queens dude, his dancing was, was, was shockingly bad. Well, well, that's my dude, I say it with love and respect. We obtained a video of you and your wife dancing. Okay. Let's observe rap yes. dancing. Yes, there it is. Yes, there it is. The rap. Boom. No. You see it? You see it? <laughs> now, now, I'm just saying this. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying this. 
<laughs> now, I, I will say this, Wendy. If you took that performance there that wasn't rehearsed, right. that's better than anything Lamar did. No disrespect, Lamar. <laughs> And that's my guy, I say it with love and respect. Okay, you can't go any place, okay? Please. I want you to participate in one of my favorite segments ever on this show. Okay. It's called Ask Wendy. Okay. Only it's gonna be called Ask Wendy and Michael. I can't wait. It's next, keep it here. <laughs> for Ask Wendy and The Rap. Yeah. All right, come on over. How you doing? <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I'm Brianna, I'm from Los Angeles. How you doing? What do you do? I work for administration for a hospital. Okay, terrific. Now, how can we help you? <laughs> so I've been dating this guy for about nine months, okay. and we recently had sex. <gasps> okay. And it was trash. Oh. He was small. Oh. It was quick. It was just all bad. Wait, wait. <laughs> So even prior to having sex, he never grinded on you and you weren't able to feel something? No. Okay. And he's a really good guy. He's nice, I like him. How old are you? 32. Okay, Brianna. Is he age appropriate to you? Yes. So what's your question to ask? Do I keep it moving or do I teach him how to do this? You first, Michael. You, you, you gotta teach him how to do it. You gotta <laughs> teach him how to do it. And, and I, I'll say this, you know, uh, if, he, if he had waited, it seems like he waited a good amount of time he, uh, Too he, long. Might, he might have jumped the gun the first time and let him let him relax. You, you she's, know, she's a sizist though as well. Well, that I get. That yeah, I can't. I got no help for you in that department. <laughs> but but if he's a good guy, uh, you, you know, you guys could could have, grow in that area. I think. Hopefully, but he can't grow specifically, <laughs> but in that area in general, I, I, ho I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. Well, here's my thought. My thought is waiting nine months before having a sex with a guy that you're dating is way too long. I agree. Now, I don't, I don't have a tendencies towards whorishness, but I'm saying three is the magic number. Okay. Third date, third week, third month. Because I'll tell you, because by then you start to kind of fall in love and catch feelings, you know? Do you have feelings for him? Eh. <laughs> oh, well, then we, then, then we, we gotta are, shut it down. You're a hardened woman, then say bye. <laughs> yeah. And move on to the next. Okay. okay. Yes, thank wow. you. Wow. How do you date a guy for nine months and not get feelings? I don't know how that works. Come on, uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Come on uh -oh. over. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, my name is John Field. I'm John. from Wilmington, Delaware. Okay, you're from Wilmington, Delaware. This yes. is John. No, rap. Um, everybody's trying to look at you with that. Wow, we match. Look. Yeah. 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 look. All right, John, um, what is your question for me and Michael? Um... I live in a senior building. Okay. Okay, okay there's uh, <laughs> a lot of young ladies that are looking at me. <laughs> yes, uh, but I'm not interested because uh, I don't want no committed relationship. Okay. I mean, I'm retired from Ford Motor Company for 26 years. All right. I'm doing me now, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So, I can't. I, what I'm trying to say is I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings or anything mm -hmm. like that. I don't know how to... Tell them what I haven't told them already, you know, that, listen, you're, you guys are looking for a committed relationship. That's not me. So I, so I don't know what else to tell them. I, how can I tell them what I already have told I like them? your delivery. Yeah. Yeah? Have you been intimate with any of these women? Just, you know? No, okay, no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> I like his delivery. I, I like it too. And they just, they could see the sexuality. Like they could see the charisma. Yeah, yeah, They could see yeah. the appeal. So I understand, but you gotta say, I'm like, I, I, you're not for me. Like, you're not for me. Like, chill. Like, okay, find okay. something, there's plenty of fish in the sea. Cause like, like, you, you can't touch this. I mean, it, it's because I'm an old man. I mean, I'm 75 years old. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I don't want nobody that's 75 with me. You what know do you what want? I'm saying now? My girl that I'm seeing now, I'm sorry. My girl that I'm seeing now is 46 years old. There you go. Okay. All right. At the 40, 50, I'm good with that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But when you get over that, get away from me. You know what I mean? Okay. Right Thank up. you, John. Yeah. Adorable. Yeah. Michael, You're not playing. Thank you so much for being here, Michael Rappaport. Thank you for having me. For more information on Michael's comedy tour, and you're in New York at that. At I the, mean, Caroline's is third tomorrow is uh, Friday and Saturday. I can't wait. There you go. Yeah. Go to WendyShow.com for more details. We'll be right back. Yeah. And we're back. Yeah. So as we all know.
know October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and today's eye candy is a breast cancer survivor. Yeah. <laughs> this is Bianca and she's from Sleepy Hollow, New York. She's here with her mother and her sister. Bianca, first of all, congratulations on being a survivor. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, how old are you? I'm 20, oh, I'm 25. My birthday was just on Sunday. Congratulations, oh, another thank birthday. You. Thank you. Um, so how did you find out that you had breast cancer? Where were you and how long ago was it? So my last year of college, I was in the shower doing a self check and oh. I found a small lump in my breast. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So my doctor said, just keep an eye on it. I was only 21 years old, but after graduating, it had grown significantly. So I went back and we did some biopsies. To the same doctor? Yeah. We did some biopsies, took, took some tests, and a week later we found out that I have breast cancer oh. at 22 years old. Okay. Yeah, so I had a double mastectomy. I went through treatment because I was not about to let cancer take me down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and then a year later, I did a full body scan and found out that there was no evidence of cancer in my body. Thank you. <laughs> well, you deserve this diva fan. <laughs> um, and we you. also have, Bianca, for you, a $300 yeah. gift card. Yeah. You can use that anywhere you want. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations again on being a survivor. We will be back right after this message. She's from Sag Harbor, Long Island. This lovely couple right here comes to New York every October. They're from San Francisco and they're celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Oh. And wherever you are, come one, come all to the circus called The Wendy Show. It's a whole lot of fun. The tickets are free. Go to wendyshow.com. It's a good time, right? Yeah. We'll be right back. I want to thank Michael Rappaport. You are the friend that every girl needs. Yeah. I also want to give it up to my one of a kind co-host, my studio audience. And you know what? I want to give it up to the entire staff here at Wendy. We work so hard to put on this cheap and cheerful show. Thank you so much for appreciating it. Tomorrow, the star of American Housewives, Katie Mixon is here, all fashions too. I love you for watching. See you next time on Wendy, bye bye. Nice.